Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Easy Power Thursday webinar series. My name is Jim Chastain. I'm the host for the presentation today. And as we are in the habit of doing before I introduce our guest speakers, we'd like to run a couple poll questions to get a little bit of a perspective on the audience. And uh, this topic is particularly interesting. So I'm curious to see how, how people weigh in on the topic. So again, welcome to all. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. And you're welcome to submit questions through the question box as the presentation proceeds. So let's start with our, our poll question. What are some of the components used in a digital switchgear? Appreciate your feedback. There's no right or wrong. Well, there's obviously going to be a right answer, but there's no liability in uh, issuing a wrong answer. And uh, we'll give you a little bit of a heads up on how the material is going to be focused as we get into the presentation. Again, we appreciate your participation and your attendance today. And we do appreciate your support of the Easy Power webinar series. So it looks like we have a quorum. And it's not surprising that it's kind of everyone's treating this as a trick question. So here's how people have weighed in. Don't have a clue what's right or wrong, so we'll have to wait for the presentation. Now, the second question is, what are the minimum requirements for protective uh, equipment used in a fully digital switch gear? I guess so it's getting a little bit trickier here, so we'll see if we're testing your metal. We'd like to get a, a sampling of, uh, of everyone attending, so don't be afraid to show your uh, your interest level. So close to a quorum, let's leave this, leave this another five seconds. Here's where folks have uh, voted on this topic. So something tells me the trick question is carrying the day. And then the last question, what are the benefits of digital switchgear? Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's a safe vote. All right. Again, thank you for participating in the uh, poll questions. Here's how folks have weighed in on this. Let's get on with the show. Our guest speakers today, both from ABB, uh, our first uh, guest speaker has experience as a design engineer and lead electrical engineer on large projects in the oil and gas industry. Today, Dwarka Padamidi is the Regional Business Development Manager for ABB based in Houston, Texas. And today he's joined by Joe Xavier, the Global Product Manager for ABB. Dwarka, you have the podium. Thank you, Jim. Um, can everyone see my screen? Looks pretty good. Okay, thank you. Thanks again, Jim, for the introduction. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone uh, who have taken time out of their busy schedule to attend this uh, presentation. Um, as Jim mentioned, like my name is Dwarka Padimiti. I'm based in Houston. And Joe Xavier is uh, based in Washington. Uh, I'll start off talking about the, uh, the digital switch gear uh, and what constitutes a digital switch gear and pass it over to, to Joe to talk about some of the key applications of protection and control uh, uh, using the digital switch gear. So before we dive in, a quick safety topic, uh, distracted driving, this is one of my pet peeves. Social media, everything is a click or a swipe away and statistics show that 80% of the people engage in uh, uh, smartphone activities while driving. So every time your phone rings or beeps, this is the urge in trying to attend to it and uh, both hands on the wheels while driving. So key learning objectives for uh, today's presentation, uh, or what is a digital switch gear? And, uh, and then talk about uh, the selection of protection within the digital switch gear and talk about some of the key applications. So here is a uh, overarching definition of uh, what uh, constitutes a digital switch gear. Uh, so we, we call it as a, uh, it's a regular traditional switch gear, but with some added features such as uh, collecting the device status information, current and voltage measurements uh, in a uh, that are uh, collected in a reliable fashion when i say reliable like using a redundant uh path of communication uh and why uh, in addition to not just collecting the data it also uh, provides commands for protection of your equipment right so uh, and in addition uh by adding condition monitoring and diagnostic information 
uh, that is available digitally also forms a, a digital switch here, right? So, so based on the poll, uh, so I, I observed that uh, uh, not many of the poll uh, uh, poll uh, people have uh, selected anything on the condition monitoring and diagnostics. Uh, when we say condition monitoring, like uh, temperature monitoring, real-time temperature monitoring, or real-time uh, partial discharge monitoring, also uh, constitutes uh, uh, as an encompassing uh, definition for a for a digital switch gear. So uh, uh, again, talking about uh, the evolution of the switch gear, right? So uh, and the the combination of all three three key components that are listed here, whether it's a uh, the IEC uh, IEEE um, standard that talks about the communication. And in addition to that, the 61850 uh, communication uh, uh, standard that talks about how we receive the data and how we transmit the data uh, for uh, for through different channels, right? Uh, and depending upon the the severity of the of the information that is being exchanged, uh, and in combination with that, uh, the use of current and voltage sensors and a relay. That is uh, that enabled to take those low energy analog inputs and reliably transfer that uh, transfer that information uh, over uh, different communication channels within the switch gear. All these three key components uh, combined together uh, to form a digital switch gear. So, one thing I wanted to highlight is uh, the ABB's medium voltage uh, digital switch gear has been UL certified. Uh, for more than a year now. So, uh, in the IEC standard, 61850 standard, we have a uh, different uh, sub subset of our standards. So, one of them is uh, I 61850-9-2 that talks about uh, uh, the samples measured values. And this information is the analog uh, data that we collect from the current and voltage sensors, which is the current and voltage uh, data that is continuously sampled at a very high sampling rate of 200 to 250 microseconds uh, per interval, right? So we get to up to 70 to 80 sample uh, uh, sampling rate per one uh, electrical cycle. So it, it is almost a continuous stream of data that we collect and send it over to, to the relay to perform uh, its functions. Right. So on the other hand, we have a goose communication protocol, which is 61850-8-1, that provides uh, um, it's based on an event-driven data that is shared among all the peer relays. Right. This can be used uh, for both protection as well as for information exchange, uh, and we, the interval. Uh, varies anywhere could vary from one millisecond all the way up to like one second. So there are different levels of digitalization, right? So when we are talking about uh, um, the digital switch care, uh, one of the stage, uh, one of the basic step is to replace your traditional current and voltage transformers with your current and voltage sensors and the reliant digital relay that can take these inputs, right? So with that, we achieve uh, some savings and on top of it, if we add the goose communication that further simplifies uh, the low voltage wiring in your uh, switch gear. And on top of it, if you are adding the, the merging units uh, and providing a centralized production scheme uh, that provides uh, a much more flexibility in terms of protection and control of your digital switch gear, and then that sets up your switch gear for future expansion. So some of the key components uh, that are highlighted here. So, so the current and voltage sensors that are shown here uh, are located exactly in the same location as your traditional current transformers. And the voltage sensors uh, can actually be included in your uh, cable connection compartment and does not require a dedicated uh, bus PT or a line PT compartment. So the current sensors, they work on a very simple uh, and a really old uh, well-known principle called as uh, uh, the, uh, the Rogowski coil sensor. 
and it it talks about um, so it's a very basic principle where uh, if you have a coil uh, wound around a conductor right so the the voltage that is developed across this uh, this coil is directly proportional to the rate of change of current going through the current carrying conductor right so uh, based on this equation the output voltage uh, when we uh, integrate it over a period of time uh, within the relay we get the actual current going through the conductor so there are many advantages of using a current sensor and one of them being uh, yeah, the current sensor does not saturate for anywhere from 0 to 4000 amps which is the operating range for a medium voltage switch gear right and, and and also the output on the sensor is is about 180 millivolts right um, so it's a very very low energy uh, analog uh, output uh, which virtually eliminates the ct uh, open ct hazard uh, that is very synonymous with a traditional iron core transformer so uh, as you can see here the the output on the current sensor is linear and so there is no uh, knee curve or there is no saturation on your current sensor uh, which is uh, which is not the case with your traditional uh, current transformer. So here are some of the pictures uh, that depicting the the location of the current sensors in a in a medium voltage switch here, and uh, it shows the current uh, sensor uh, right through uh, your uh, your primary bushings, and uh, the green cable is the is the low energy uh, Ethernet cable. That gets connected on the back of your uh, of your relay. The the voltage sensor works on the principle of a, a simple uh, residual voltage divider uh, principle, and and the and the voltage that is measured across a a, a small resistor uh, uh, has a transformation ratio of about ten thousand to one. Right. So if you have a Line to a uh, line to neutral voltage of uh, 10 kV on the system, the output voltage that is measured on the residual uh, on the voltage sensor is about one volt, right? So again, uh, it's uh, uh, you do not have the issues that are uh, traditionally uh, seen in a voltage transformer like the the ferro resonance. Uh, we don't uh, and also. Uh, you do not require a dedicated bus PT or a line PT compartment. And here are another couple of examples of uh, a, a voltage sensor that is uh, that is installed directly in the in the cable connection compartment of your digital switch gear. And uh, and here is a quick uh, um, setup uh, that is very similar to your traditional. Uh, Medium voltage switch gear, right? So just like your traditional switch gear, we have developed a digital FT uh, switch that can be used uh, to do any kind of uh, um, primary and secondary injection testing during the the maintenance period of your uh, of your medium voltage switch gear. And here is a very simple overlay of uh, um, how we perform that uh, the testing and how the connections are made inside your uh, switch gear. Uh, for each phase, right? So you have a dedicated relay that takes this low energy analog inputs, and then uh, the current and voltage sensors uh, for each phase are connected through an adapter, and it goes through the FT, FT uh, digital FT switch, and then gets connected to your uh, to your back of the relay uh, for each of the phases. Uh, at this point, I'll uh, pass it on to to Joe Xavier for talking about the the production. Uh, and uh, applications. Thank you, Jim, and uh, thank you, Dorga. Um, again, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, um, and thanks for joining the presentation today. So uh, I'm going to talk, continue the talk um, where uh, Dwarka left and uh, dive into the selection of protective relays in digital switchgear and uh, go uh, after that with the applications. So, all right. So we. Uh, we talked about uh, this, uh, 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 Dwarga mentioned this uh, a little bit uh, in his uh, slides, earlier slides. So what we, um, the digital switch gear concept is wrapped around the IEC 61850 standard. 
um, much of the digitization happens there. And so for that reason, uh, the protective relays have to be uh, meeting certain re minimum requirements. Um, so these are some of the minimum requirements, uh, like the 61A50 edition two um, is the latest one. And then there's 2.1, which has uh, now come out recently, but uh, the, uh, the much used standard is edition two. And then it should support 61A50 edition uh, A-1 standard, which is uh, called as the um, station bus standard and which supports the vertical communication of uh, the devices, the IEDs with the um, a SCADA system, for example, in HMI and so on. And then we have the other part, which is the horizontal communication, which is called as GOOS communication. Uh, if you are not familiar with GOOS, it stands for Generic Object Oriented Station Event. So uh, that is a way we exchange information between the devices. And that's the way we eliminate a copper wiring uh, within the panel, within the gear. And then it should support the 9-2 uh, LE process bus or sample value uh, standard. Uh, and Dwarga mentioned this, and that's the way we exchange the analog measurements, the current and voltage measurement between uh, the devices. And one other important thing is that uh, when we use sample values, especially uh, the uh, precision time synchronization is very essential. And the standard which supports that is uh, IEEE 1588 uh, precision time protocol. And that uh, needs to be supported. And um, last but not the least, uh, uh, the digital switchgear relay should be able to support low energy analog input. That's uh, uh, the uh, output of a current and voltage sensor as mentioned by Dwarka. Okay, so uh, just to want to give an idea how things are tied together within a gear. Uh, before we look at the application. So this is how uh, it is uh, set up in, a, in, a, in an architecture standpoint. So you see here the, the current sensor. This is the symbol for the current sensor, right? Uh, you know, we, we are familiar with the traditional CT and the PT symbols, but in the one line uh, with the current sensor, this will be the symbol. And the, the current sensor and the voltage sensor are, are used here. And this is a, a main tie, main type of arrangement, what you're seeing here. So we have a main one uh, tie uh, breaker and a main two. Now, what, you, what we have here is on the main, we have a, a current sensor and a voltage sensor, right? And that is uh, directly uh, connected to the, uh, the relay, which is sitting on the main panel. And for the feeder for the, on this bus section here, uh, we have a voltage sensor with, to measure the bus voltage. And for the, for the respective feeders, we have its own current sensors. So they measure its current sensor, current, uh, sorry, the, uh, the current from, for, the, this, for the respective feeder, and that gets uh, directly into the relay here. For this relay, we have a voltage sensor connected to here as well. Now, how do we transfer the information from uh, this relay to this relay? Uh, because we are not having a voltage connection here, right? As you can see. So the way we do that is via um, the sample values. So we have uh, the sample values sending out into the communication bus, which, which is the process bus, and then that gets connected. That gets transferred over to the other relays which are requiring that voltage information for measurements, for protection, and so on, for metering purpose, and so on. So everything can be done. So let me just change my pointer here so from here to here that's how it uh, it get transferred now if you look at the other side of the of the bus so we have the tie feeder here or the tie uh, breaker which has its own uh, current sensor and uh, we have a, a bus voltage sensor uh, for the bus section two now the current sensor is connected to the its uh, relay on that uh, uh, main uh, uh, sorry the tie uh, relay and the voltage is connected over there as well. Now, for the other relays on this bus, uh, we don't have a connection for the voltage uh, sensor directly, as you can see. Now, the, how the information flow happens is that from this relay, the voltage information on this bus section can be shared via sample values. It goes to the, all the relays connected to that bus. So that, that is a pretty, pretty neat architecture here. Now, the other important thing is uh, when we talk about a main time, main arrangement, 
um, in, in many cases, we would uh, need a sync check uh, function because uh, before we close the bus, especially if you're doing a, um, it's, a, it's a close transition, for example, you want to make sure that the, the voltages are in sync, uh, sync before we do that. So here, this tie relay has voltage information from this bus section two here, but it can obtain the voltage from the other side via sample value as well. And then the sync check function happens within the tie relay, and then it takes a decision whether to close the breaker at that point or not. And similarly, on the main, uh, you know, if the main feeder uh, requires a sync check function also, then it has its own uh, the line uh, voltage coming over directly, but the, the bus voltage can be uh, taken over from via sample value. So we are doing a lot uh, using um, communication. So what is important is uh, to have a very robust communication network. And this becomes a very important part of the digital switch here. So from the, uh, so to make it the robust, the, uh, the standard uh, supports uh, redundant solutions, redundant communication networks. So there are two uh, uh, popular ones. Uh, one is called as HSR and the other one is called as PRP. So what we hear, see here is a PRP network. PRP stands for Parallel Redundancy Protocol. And each IED, each relay, um, has uh, two ports, and each port is connected to two different networks, as you can see here. So a LAN A and a LAN B a connection. So they have uh, two different uh, managed Ethernet uh, switches and totally independent two different networks. But the data is sent out from the IED is the same on LAN A and LAN B. So that means the entire thing is duplicated. So LAN A and LAN B are, are completely active all the time. So if at all something happens to the LAN A, network A, um, the data is uh, available on network B and the process continues there, the protection uh, continues without any uh, failover time. And here on the right side is the HSR network, which is a high availability seamless redundancy uh, protocol uh, as, as that's, that is what HSR stands for. And here, this is a ring topology where every IED is connected uh, via two ports again, uh, and uh, the ring is formed. And in this uh, topology, the IED sends out the same information in two different directions. So direction here and this way as well. So it, 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 it has to hop over from, for different uh, IEDs uh, to complete the, complete the ring. And um, so here the information uh, goes from both direction. And if at all there is a breakage happening at some point, a communication breakage happened, the information uh, is, reaches the other end via the other side, to the other side of the ring. So again, here is a zero uh, fail-safe uh, uh, time uh, for this HSR topology as well. And as you can uh, think that the ring topology has a, a, a limitation with the number of IEDs connected because you, know, you, you don't want to add too much latency for the network information. But whereas PRP has no such limitations. Okay, now we go into the protection part. So, um, so for those uh, of us uh, who work in the protection field, we know that uh, there are uh, primarily six categories of protection zones. And there is a generator uh, and the generator transformer unit uh, uh, protection zone, which is uh, typically covered by its own relays. And there is a transformer in the power system, which we protect by its own relay. And then we need to also protect the, the bus. The bus uh, could be the high voltage bus or the medium voltage bus or the low voltage bus. Uh, we need to protect that bus uh, part of the power system. And then the, the lines or the feeders has to be protected, uh, whether it's a distribution line or a sub-transmission line. And then the equipment has to be protected also, uh, whether it's a motor, uh, which, is, uh, which is the load connected, or a static load like a capacitor bank uh, or I mean, any other type of static load. And then, of course, it's capacitor or reactor banks. So those are the equipment's typical seen in a power system and all these um, elements have to be uh, protected. In, in some cases we might have to do an overlapping 
um, of the protection uh, zones because uh, of uh, uh, you know that that becomes a part of the protection coordination. But the bottom line is we need to be protecting every part of the power system, and that is the primary uh, role of a protective relay. Now the different products which you're going to use in the digital switch here. I just wanted to highlight that uh, before we look at a typical one line diagram, an example. So um, the Reliant 615 series, uh, one of the most popular uh, series of relays from uh, ABB. And these 615 series relays are application specific IEDs, so which means we have one uh, device uh, designed for fear protection uh, the other 615 relay, like RET 615 for a transformer protection, there is one device uh, dedicated for motor protection application, another one for generator protection, and then line differential protection, and so on. And 615 series relays are characterized by their compactness. Um, this is probably one of the compact relays in the market with uh, uh, the, uh, the so much of functions and features built in, and it's a uh, withdrawable plug-in de design is a very popular feature as well. Then the other uh, type of relay which we use in a digital switch here is a, a REX640. Uh, we call it as all-in-one protection. Why? We say that because unlike the 615 series, 640 is a, is a standardized uh, hardware and with a modularized software, which means uh, the, the hardware remains the same whether we use it as a, a transformer protection or a feeder protection or a generator protection or a bus bar protection and so on. Uh, what uh, changes is the, the software application which we load on these, in this hardware. So it is a very modular concept both, both on the hardware and the software and it always comes with the base package and then any of these application packages can be loaded onto this REX640 relay. So it's a type of universal relay. Uh, we call it as all-in-one protection applied both in the utility and industrial applications. So this is how the, the modularized software packages are organized. Um, as I mentioned, there's a base functionality. And then on top of that, we can add any of these uh, protection function, one or more, uh, like a power transformer protection or a machine protection, that is a generator protection or a motor protection. And uh, uh, then we have many other application packages, including bus bar protection, arc flash protection, and so on. Then the other um, uh, piece of equipment which we can use uh, to digitize the switch gear is uh, something called as SSC 600, which stands for Smart Substation Control and Protection Device, which is a centralized protection and control device, as you can see here. This is a, so this guy will be sitting on the top and then uh, it can control, can protect and control the entire switch here up to 20 uh, feeders uh, at the moment, two feeders or transformer, whichever it is. So here, uh, it, it, as I mentioned, it incorporates the centralized protection um, philosophy and completely based on 61850. And it, these, the software um, protection functions which run on this uh, uh, device is also um, based on the Reliant technology, which has been a, a proven uh, 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 protection technology uh, worldwide, and it's flexible to, uh, to adapt and modify for the changing netwo network requirements. And the other uh, benefit is to uh, be the visibility to view and monitor process at the substation level. So for example, here is the um, um, digital fault recording from the centralized device, and then you can see all the 20 uh, feeders uh, at one place. And then it is, uh, it is a, a very robust industrial computer technology uh, with high performance uh, computing and reliable operation, which means no moving parts and with the redundant power supply. Okay, so here again, the software is um, organized in different applications, packages. There is a base functionality, protection functionality. On top of that, we can add a power, power transformer, machine protection, uh, power quality measurements, um, in the connection protection, and bus bar protection, uh, including arc flash detection. Okay, now we are getting into the uh, application. So how will we uh, tie these together and how we can convert um, a traditional switch here into a digital switch here. So we will look at the step-by-step -step, um, uh, design process, how we, can, how we can do that. So we look at two examples. Example one is a typical one line with a transformer bus feeder motor, line differential, and generator protection. 
and example two is uh, with a typical one line with a double-ended substation, uh, which is a like main tie main arrangement with feeder line differential, small motor, and automatic bus transfer scheme. So this is a typical one line, uh, which is a which is a this is a traditional switch here. So if you make a traditional switch here, this is how we will we will do it. So we have a uh, relays uh, for uh, different uh, parts of the system, as we talked earlier. For example, this is a transformer. The main has a transformer here incoming. Uh, transformer, so it has a, it needs a transformer protection with uh, all the overcurrent ground fault protection for, for both on the high side of the transformer and the low side of the transformer, and of course uh, for large power transformers we use a differential protection. So transformer differential protection 87T, and uh, these relays are capable of doing arc flash detection as well. So we can position this sensors uh, within this gear uh, and then incorporate arc flash detection. And same way, we do have uh, uh, dedicated devices, uh, REM615 for motor protection with all its uh, motor-related application. And then uh, for the small motor, there's a large motor here, which will need a, a differential protection, for example, um, that we can we can do that again with an REM615. Uh, we, we have, this is a, another feeder with a long feeder, which may be going into another substation, maybe within the facility. Uh, so which will need, uh, apart from the, uh, overcurrent ground fault protection we will in, have to use an 87l uh, a line differential protection so we have we can use an red 615 for that and for a, a short feeder regular feeder protection we can use an ref 615 with the overcurrent ground fault um, and then if you need a reclosing for some for, for, for some reason we can have a 79 function in that uh, and then directional functions if needed and uh, so on and then and then for the generator we can use an REG615 with the similar functions, all the protections dedicated to a generator protection. And then we need to protect the bus as well. So bus, for, for bus protection, uh, what is traditionally used is a high impedance scheme where we have a dedicated relay for doing the looking at the bus falls. So uh, the what is required for a high impedance scheme is uh, 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 dedicated CTs for from all the associated feeders. So we have a dedicated CT from the main and also from all the feeders, outgoing feeders, uh, then we summate that and then use that summated input uh, to bring the current, the differential current into the uh, bus protection relay. And this relay will um, take care of the bus uh, application. But now this is, uh, this is a very uh, proven scheme, but this uh, is the traditionally that's how it's been done. Uh, but the, the downside of that is that, you know, uh, we need to deal with the designing the scheme is a little laborious and uh, uh, requires a lot of attention and care because the because of the saturation issues which will happen uh, within uh, within the, uh, within the gear and the within the power system. Now with uh, digital technology, we can avoid that bus protection relay. So you can see here we can avoid the bus protection relay and then uh, use a zone selective interlocking scheme, for example. Uh, to take care of the bus falls, so that we can we can avoid the dedicated relay and also the dedicated CTs which we traditionally use. And with this uh, technology, we we can uh, with the zone selective interlocking, we can have a coordination between the main relay and the outgoing relays, so that a fault on the bus is cleared as fast as possible. Now let us see how we uh, convert uh, the. Uh, the traditional scheme into a digital scheme. So here, uh, as a first step, we uh, change on the feeder, uh, the CT into a sensor, current sensor, and then um, the, we use a voltage sensor to bring in the voltage uh, to the relay. And then um, as a next step, we can, we can change the small motors uh, uh, from the traditional CT to a current um, sensor. And then as a next step, we can remove the voltage connection. Uh, as you can see here, we have the uh, traditional PT. So we remove the voltage uh, connection from the traditional PT to the motor protection relay. And then uh, we can replace the um, current sensor CT from uh, the long feeder, uh, for, which is using, uh, used for the differential protection. And then uh, we can replace it with the, with the current sensor. 
And the voltage sensor uh, can, voltage connection, sorry, can be removed uh, to that voltage uh, current differential relay um, from the traditional PT. And now we can start sharing the uh, voltage from this relay, uh, from the feeder relay to the other relays, because uh, it is the same bus voltage which is to be seen by all these de devices. So we can share the, um, the sample value current voltage sample value from the feeder relay to the other relays connected to it. And if you want to go a uh, next step, we can uh, use the uh, REX640, which is a, a universal relay, which I mentioned earlier, to um, for large motor transformer and uh, generator protection. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, all these uh, large devices will need a differential protection for the motor differential, uh, transformer differential, and generator differential. So we can we can have the sensors for, for measuring the current from one side of the device, as you can see here. And uh, in differential scheme, we we need the current input from both sides, right? And that's how we dis dis define the or design the differential protection scheme. So in this case, we have the current sensor sitting with the, in the medium voltage side. And then if the uh, if the, there's a traditional CT still on the high side, which is typically not part of the switch here, which is outside the switch here, we can bring those traditional CT into REX640 and then we can still do the differential protection. So the one side will be a CT, traditional CT input, the other side will be the current sensor input. So the same way, uh, the same thing applies for the uh, large motor and a large generator. If if the you can choose to convert this to the um, uh, uh, current sensor as well, if uh, that is possible, depending on the layout of the system. Okay, now, so we have we had two types of relays in the previous slide: uh, uh, the 615 relays and the 640. Now, if uh, uh, a customer choose to uh, uh, makes a decision that I want to minimize the inventory and increase the flexibility of interchangeability, uh, one can decide to have REX640 on all the feeders, um, on, not only on the uh, large equipment like uh, large motor, uh, large generator, but all the other uh, feeders can also utilize REX640. And uh, you know that become a uniform uh, hardware across the board. And then if you go to uh, another step, uh, we can use an uh, SSC 600 device, as I mentioned earlier, that's a, that's a centralized protection device. So a centralized protection device means that all the feeders can be protected via this device. So we can do the transformer protection, small motor feeder, and bus protection with this uh, SSC 600. So what is required is uh, the, the current information and the voltage information from the feeders have to be fed into the um, uh, the centralized uh, protection device, SSC 600. And we, we, we can use an uh, SMU 615, which stands for substation merging unit. Um, and, and I didn't mention that in the previous slides, but merging unit is a device according to 61850 standard, which will convert the current and voltage information connected to it into a digital format uh, as per the 9-2 LE standard. So that is a merging unit device and merging unit will send out this information. So as you can, if you, uh, if you think about the previous slides, we did not have a merging unit when we talked about um, you know, RUF, the 615 series relay. So what was happening is that the relay, 615 relay, when it is doing the protection of the local feeder, it is also acting as a merging unit. So relays act as a, a develop as a merging unit. And the same thing is, uh, is depicted here as well. Uh, when a, in a 640 relay, it is doing a local uh, protection at the same time, you can send out the sample values uh, out of this uh, 640 device, and it can be utilized by other re other re peer relays or by the centralized protection device. Okay, now we come to the example number two, uh, which is a, a, a double-ended substation or a main tie main arrangement, and this is how a traditional uh, switch gear will look like uh, with the traditional CTs and the PTs. Uh, as you can see, we have dedicated um, uh, devices, uh, uh, 615 relays in this case, uh, for each of those components of the system, including a tie feeder, we have a dedicated relay. Now, here, one, one thing to note that in a digital switch here, in a digital environment, we can 
uh, convert, we can, we can have the ATS or the bus transfer scheme programmed within the relay itself. So 615 relays have the capability to do the logic scheme within the relay. So with that, we don't need any additional logic controllers to handle the logics for the bus transfer scheme. So these devices, the main relays from main one and main two and the tie relays will be talking to each other via goose messaging and uh, of course sample values. And then they can, they can run the uh, bus transfer scheme without uh, any additional hardware. And the same thing can be uh, converted into the digital format. So we replace the, um, the traditional CT and the PT using current sensors and the voltage sensor, the similar philosophy. And it can, this, can, this is with the 615 relay. The same thing can be done with the 640 relay. And if needed, we can go with a centralized protection device as well. OK, so uh, with, with that, I uh, 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 want to conclude uh, uh, the, what we looked at is what is a digital switch here? It reduces copper wiring using Ethernet communication, uh, mainly goose messages. And the next step, you can go uh, further uh, reduction of uh, copper wiring by utilizing 9-2LE sample value standard and reliable communication networking and go fully digital using current and voltage sensors instead of traditional CT and PT. And selection of uh, protection within the switch here, um, yeah, you know, we can do it for all parts of the power system, feeders, transformers, small motors, large motors, line differential generators, and so on. And we can have redundant protection using SSC 600, that's a centralized protection. And we looked at some of the applications, which are where we can do a very cost-effective automatic transfer, transfer scheme, very cost-effective bus protection scheme, and very cost-effective redundant protection scheme. And um, thank you for your attention. And at this time, we can take questions. Oh, yeah. Joe, the first question we've got is from Tracy. And she's asking, what is the cost plus of the uh, sensors? How do they stack up versus the conventionals, current and voltage sensors? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, Dorga, you want, you want to answer that? Yeah, yeah. So I believe uh, it's very, very competitive when we are comparing it with uh, with the traditional current and uh, voltage transformers. Yes. And I have a question, and mm -hmm. I, I'm not involved with these types of uh, equipment, equipment normally, but what is the uh, concern regarding cyber protection as far as using uh, digital controls? Is this all isolated from mm -hmm. the internet or the involving internet interfaces? Oh, that's a great question, Jim. So um, that's a, and it's a very genuine concern, uh, which we need to be uh, concerned about. Um, so now there are, there are various things. So now on the device level, we have um, um, requirements to, there are certain, again, for cybersecurity, there are standards to be met. So we meet, uh, uh, we comply with those standards uh, to meet with the uh, cybersecurity requirement from the utility standpoint. NERC, the SIP, is the uh, you know federal agency uh, which decide or uh, mandate certain requirements. So complying with the NERC SIP uh, from the utility standpoint and even from the industry uh, standpoint, um, it's important. So at the device level, we have requirements to comply with that. Uh, for example, password, uh, the complexity of the password, uh, audit trailing. So who is logging into the device, and uh, you know who who who's a user which, who logged in and logged out at what time, uh, what is the um, you know configuration uh, version and so on. So there are several requirements that is monitored at the device level. And then uh, to your other question, this scheme does not require internet connection. What we are just talking about is the Ethernet connection between the devices. Mm -hmm. So there is no connection to the external world. Uh, from from the from a digital switch gear. Now, when we use um, uh, a SCADA or a, or a centralized device, um, typically, if uh, a data is taped to be taken out into a SCADA system or a DMS system, um, that goes via a SCADA uh, controller. Typically, uh, in our case, uh, it will be a Z600 box, uh, and that will be the point of entry from an external world into the switch gear. And then there are firewalls built into those devices. Uh, and then only after that firewall, the, it, the, it can come into the uh, switch gear. So there are, there's adequate protection levels built into this system. 
Excellent. Another question is, what are the differences in commissioning traditional hardwire protection relays versus the relays using IEC 61850? I think that's a great question. Um, sorry, Joe, I, I can just give my side of it and then we can, we can answer. Uh, so you, you reduce your amount of control wiring in the switch gear by about like 90%, right? So all the point-to-point -point wiring, point-to-point uh, uh, -point testing that you do on a traditional piece of switch gear, you don't have to do that anymore. And then everything is like, like Joe said, like it's all Ethernet connection, right? So you all do all kind of debugging within your software. Uh, so uh, we have like a software called PCM 600. We can look at the protection schemes and and uh, easily can do the debugging and change your protection uh, logic within the within the software itself. Sorry, Joe. You want to add more? No, that's that's good, uh, Dwarka. So what I wanted, what I was going to say was uh, the uh, the other aspect of the uh, testing. Uh, for example, the testing the relay. Um, typically, we we test the relay by secondary injection, whether a five ampere or one ampere injection at the at the relay uh, directly into the relay using a test switch. Uh, you know, FT test switch, for example. Now. The same uh, uh, thing can be applied here. Here, you don't have to deal with the one ampere or five ampere injection. What uh, uh, what is uh, the output of the current sensor uh, is a millivolt signal, and the output of a voltage uh, sensor is a volt signal, right? So uh, we need we can test the relay. Uh, relay testing standpoint, we are injecting only a, a volt or a millivolt signal into the protection relay. And they, the test set uh, manufacturer these days have uh, the, uh, an adapter which can convert uh, the analog uh, values like a five ampere, one ampere into a smaller value in the millivolts and volts, which can be injected directly into the relay. And that's the one, if you remember the, the slide uh, which Dwarka showed early on, uh, which shows an FT14 digital switch, uh, which, with which you can inject those uh, test values directly into the relay. So from the testing standpoint, uh, we uh, it's much safer because we are not uh, dealing with uh, higher voltages and uh, you know, currents. Um, but uh, you know we, we can do the same way as we do the testing uh, of other traditional connection relays. Next question says, have you implemented the digital P and C on a retrofit project? Uh, great question. I I uh, I from my side, um, I would uh, um, let Dwarka add to this. Um, yes, there has been some projects where uh, the customers were uh, going to an, a, an old gear, um, at, the, at least that gear was at least 30, 35 years old, um, and they were uh, looking at the digital uh, switch gear because uh, digital applications, so they're keeping the breaker same, uh, they wanted to change all the controls, um, including that uh, replacing the CT, uh, to the sensors and so on, and then that was uh, yeah. that was a project which I, I was aware. Uh, Dwarka, you have anything? Yeah, to yeah. That? So, so we have worked on a couple of utility projects where uh, the end user wanted to extend the life of the uh, life of the equipment, right? So, so as I mentioned earlier, so uh, the temperature monitoring, continuous temperature monitoring, and diagnostics and partial discharge monitoring also falls under uh, the definition of a digital switch gear, right? So. Uh, it's not just uh, changing your current and voltage sensors. Uh, uh, I mean, traditional uh, CTs to those sensors, right? So, so we have worked on a couple of uh, utility projects where uh, we have installed the, the real time. Uh, I mean, the on 24/7 uh, uh, um, temperature monitoring and and uh, partial discharge uh, elements within the switch gear. So that would uh, give an indication. Or whether the temp, uh, whether there is any kind of uh, trending up of of temperature uh, within the cable connections of your switch gear, which could lead to a potential arc flash situation, right? And the same thing with your uh, partial discharge, which could lead to a a breakdown of insulation uh, in your uh, in your switch gear, right? So we have implemented those uh, on a retrofit uh, projects, and and we have we have sold multiple projects uh, for, for the greenfield applications. The next question, I think, is an extension on that topic. And mm -hmm. 
Now the question is, can these relays integrate other types of switchgear protection sensors, such as light and pressure sensors? Joe, you have any feedback on that? No, I think um, it, it, this this falls in line with the you know the the partial discharge monitoring and the temperature monitoring. So um, what I can say is that um, yes, it is possible. I don't know whether we have done it, uh, Tuarka. If you can uh, chime in on that, but uh, if it is if it if it is uh, in open protocol uh, where these sig signals are communicated and it can be tied into the network. Then I think there's a possibility to do that, but I'm I I would uh, I'm not too sure whether that was done in any of our projects. Next yeah, when, when we get all the questions, like we will uh, we'll touch base with the factory and and get some feedback that you can send it out to all the attendees. Okay. Uh, the last question that we have time for is: the traditional bus differential protection not possible with the digital switch gear? Is zone selective interlocking the only option? Um. Yeah, great question. So um, the traditional um, high impedance scheme. So there are there are various ways of doing bus protection, right? We can do high impedance scheme. Uh, we can do the uh, low impedance scheme. So and zone selective is a, another alternative. So high impedance scheme, as I mentioned, uh, requires a dedicated set of CTs and a dedicated relay. Now you. Um, you cannot do a high impedance scheme in a digital switch here where where we have to bring in a current from multiple feeders and then do the differential but we can do a low impedance scheme uh, using in a digital switch here and that will be done via ssc 600 where we bring the current information from all the feeders the main and the all the outgoing feeders uh, into the SSC 600 via sample values, and then we can run a low impedance bus differential scheme uh, within SSC 600. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, I think we have not been able to get to the whole list of questions. Anything that we weren't able to cover, we will follow up with emails. Uh, I do appreciate uh, your contribution today. It was a great presentation, and we look forward to having you back again in the future. Thank you very much. So long. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Thank you.